say that again. Good evening. Wow. And welcome to this, this Monday, Thursday, 2024 Holy Week. And I want to welcome those who will be joining us online tonight. We welcome you into this congregation, too. And I want to remind all those who watch at home that you are a very vital part of our congregation. And uh, we, we just um, say welcome to everybody. And now, if you would, follow with me in our, in our call to worship in your bulletin or on your screen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Would you stand for our opening hymn? That hymn is beneath the cross of Jesus. Would you join me in the confession? My sisters and brothers, Christ shows us his love by becoming a humble servant. Let us draw near to God and confess our sin in the truth of God's Spirit. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us. Where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your spirit make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated.
this Holy Week has been different for me would be an understatement. Many of you have heard the news that my father-in-law is slowly slipping away from this life and into the next life. And as we sat with him today, I kept thinking about tonight and about how harried everything is in my brain. And then I remembered that as Jesus sat at the table with his disciples, there were a few things going on with him. Now, he was the Son of God, and I'm not. So I hope that you'll bear with me as I share with you some of the thoughts that, um, that I have been thinking on over the last few days. I read from John chapter 13. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, and that he is Judas, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now also I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This evening you will note that our sanctuary has been somewhat transformed at the front. And we have 
attempted to create a sense of being in the upper room where Jesus and His disciples would have shared together in the Passover meal. Jesus as the host would have been seated at this place in the, at the table. Judas as the person holding the seat of honor would have been seated here. John, the one whom Jesus loved, who leaned on Jesus' breast, would have been here. Those are the only seats that we have a pretty good idea of where the people were. Everybody else was just scattered around the table. When you come to one of the two tables this evening, you will see a nameplate. You're taking that chair for this time. And so we're in the upper room and Jesus is sharing the Passover meal with His disciples. If you have ever been to a Seder meal, a Passover meal, you know that there are many elements to the meal and many readings that are a part of the meal. But Jesus held up two pieces in particular. The bread. Which He said, this is My body which is given for you. And then the cup. This is My blood which is shed for you. And so during that memorable Passover meal, there are only the two elements that we remember most in our Christian faith, the bread and the cup, the elements of the Eucharist. And later this evening, you will sit in one of these seats and the bread and the cup will be passed to you. But if we could imagine ourselves in the upper room, first there wouldn't have been two tables, but we thought we'd better go with two because we anticipated just about as many people as are here this evening. So, there would have been the one table, the one focus on the chair of the host, And then the sharing together of these who loved each other. And in the Synoptic Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus tells them, I have longed to have this meal with you. And then John takes us and shows us another picture. A picture of a Savior who took on the form of a servant. And Jesus began washing feet. The job of the servant. Jesus wore the towel of the servant. And when Jesus said to Peter, Peter said, No, this is not right. You're not washing my feet. And those of you who are studying the Gospel of John with me on Wednesday evenings, you've heard me say it time and again, if something starts to sound sacramental, that is on purpose. And Jesus tells Peter that he needs to be washed. And Peter says, well, then wash me all over. And we hear the reference to baptism, which was not part of the Last Supper. But John wanted us to hear that sacramental message. It's not just your feet that need to be washed. You need to be washed all over. And so we hear the sacramental note, but the note that stays with us 
is the Son of God taking on the form of a servant and serving all of those around the table with Him who would later that same evening desert Him. But still, He served them. And they would eventually get it. If you haven't heard that part of the story, I'll be telling it on Sunday morning. But the disciples would eventually get it. But on that night, the image they would remember is the Son of God. The one who, as they said, spoke like no man spoke. The one who had the words of life kneeling and washing their feet, serving them, and then getting up and saying, you need to wash other people's feet. And in the upper room, we see this example of service. And every time a cry of need comes from our community, it may involve washing feet, it may involve stooping to help someone, but we are called to service just as the first disciples were reminded of that at the table. It was a table that was focused on what united them rather than what divided them. Some of you this evening will sit at a chair and you will see before you the name Matthew. Others of you will sit at a seat where you see the name Simon. We all know Simon Peter, but there was another disciple named Simon, Simon the Zealot. Why does that matter? Well, you see, the Zealot had pledged their lives to putting to death any Jew who collaborated with the Romans. And so at this table, there's Matthew and there's Simon for enemies. But what united them was their allegiance to Christ. And they learned that this was to be a table of inclusion. Jesus invited Judas to the table. Jesus invited Peter to the table, and he invited all of them to the table. And in spite of all of the ways that I have messed up, in spite of all of the ways that you may have messed up. We get our invitation to. We're invited to the table. This place where we are included. And then it was the table of forgiveness. Jesus told them while they were eating at the table that one of them was going to betray him. And then he hands the bread and the cup to Judas anyway and serves him just like he does the others. Jesus told Simon Peter, you're going to deny me. Simon receives the bread and the cup. Jesus told the other disciples, you're going to be scattered before the night is over. And then he said to them, have my body and my blood. It was and is 
a table of forgiveness. And so we are invited to the table this evening, not because of who we are, not because of what we have or haven't done, But Jesus has issued an invitation and He wants you to come and know that you are included, you are accepted, and you are forgiven. So, for those of you who are watching online, this is going to be kind of an abrupt ending tonight because of the unique way in which we're going to share in Holy Communion. And for those of you who are here with us in person, what we will do is we will serve you. Uh, there are 12 chairs, and of course, one of those is empty, so we ask you to come 11 at a